Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. verse 11 because I see y'all brothers y'all been paying attention you've been here for a minute you just coming up you've been here for about 30 minutes or so so what the officers bringing out was was on point all right but I want to deal with something very uh quickly because I notice a lot of times when we go into repentance and that it takes a time and it's a process sometimes our people become comfortable right so I want to show you something real quick read Romans chapter 13 and verse 11 come on and know that knowing that the time that it is and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep so the bible says knowing the time now we know that it's high time to wake out of sleep what do you think he means by knowing the time what can we see from what's going on in the world today to let us know this world ain't right something going on the murder Coronavirus, you understand that? Black on black crime at an all time high. Brother walked up and brother went inside the uh, the the store. What was that in Chicago? Shot the people in their head. You saw that? Shot a brother in his head for you. You see that? Brother went inside of a store, shot three brothers, killed three brothers and wounded one because he said somebody's shoes. His shoes was busted. Dude made fun of him. He took his strap out and took three of his brothers' lives and injured one. You know we in the last days, bruh. Homosexuality running rampant. You know Atlanta is the mecca for black homosexuality. You know that, right? Now, do black lives matter? So how black lives matter, but you free to be a homosexual in uh, Atlanta right here today? You won't even lay down with a woman to have black life. The black woman won't even lay down with a man to have black life. So how black lives matter and we destroying black life? Yeah. Adultery destroys black life. Right. Murder right. destroys black life. Right. Mass incarceration destroys black life. Right. Homosexuality destroys black life. Right. STDs destroy black life. Right. So what we get at is sin destroys black life. Right. That's right. Black lives came out into God laws matter. Right. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Read it again. Read it again. And that knowing the time that it that now it is high time. To awake out of sleep. This is a calling. The Lord calling y'all brothers. It's time to join the army of the Lord. The Lord said, now we know it's high time to wake up out of sleep, man. Why? Why? Why you say that? Read. For now is our salvation nearer when we believe. He said, now the black and Hispanic and Native American Indian man and woman, our salvation nearer than we ever believed before. Your grandmama talked about it was coming with fire, right? Your great grandma was talking about, yeah, baby, he came with water. Next time he coming with fire. All our grandparents said that, right? We living in those times, bro. Right. We living in the days, right? Go to uh, Luke 21, 25. Watch this. Luke 21, 25. That's how you know we living in those days. Watch this. Come on. Luke chapter 21 and verse 25. And there shall be a sign from the sun uh -huh. and in the moon. Did y'all see the moon last night? What color was it? It was red. You didn't see the moon was red last night? As the night went on, it started to turn a little yellow. The moon was red. We see all kind of signs in the skies. Some ain't right about the earth right now. That's why the Lord said, look, it's time for you to wake up. Repent. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We close. Read. And in the stars and upon the earth address of the nation. Distress. Read again. And upon the earth, the stress of nations. What do you mean the stress of nations? Famine. War. You understand? Coronavirus. People can't travel. You can't even go to another city. What that? That's in 2nd Edges 15. I think it's verse 16. Read that for me real quick. We'll come right back there. You can't even go in the cities. 
certain states, you got to quarantine when you get to the state. They say, okay, you where you coming from? I'm coming from Louisiana. Yeah, bro, if you're going to come into our state, you got to quarantine 14 days, and we're going to give you a coronavirus test to make sure you ain't got that virus. That's, we living in those times, bro. It's worse than it's ever been. And guess what? It's going to get worse than this. The coronavirus coming back even harder in the fall and in the winter. You know why? You know why? The white man already told you. Dr. Anthony Fauci already told you. Oh, it's gonna be a big coronavirus increase in the winter. You know why? He, I mean, he gonna release it. Cause the white man is the one created the coronavirus. That's right. He created it. They had patented it in 2004. We can read now, man. We ain't no dummies no more. We can read now. So we can see this man the devil. What? This is the devil that the Bible is talking about. What? When the what? Bible talk about a deceiver, it's talking about the so-called white man. What? The Bible calls them Esau or Edom. And we so gummed up, gullible in our mind, we still serving white Jesus. We got black folks still serving white Jesus till this day. Yeah. After the white man has shown us year after year after year after year. Mike Brown, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, um, Philando Castile, the coronavirus, Black Wall Street, white Jesus, conquistadors, slave ships, hug us from trees. And we still don't realize that this man, the devil that the Bible speaking about. What? Yeah. Read what you got, bro. Second Edges chapter 15 and verse 16. I'm going to read that real quick, but he can't go into a city. I believe that's what it is. Read. Second Ezra chapter 6, chapter 15. Verse 17. Verse 17. Bring it out. A man shall desire to go into a city. So you might want to go to Africa. You might want to go to the, the motherland, right? You might say, hey, man, look, I got my money right. I'm going to Africa. Then you get ready to go, book your ticket, and you find out, nah, you can't get into Africa right now. It's shut down. They're not, they're not allowing any international travel. And you say, how the hell somebody go stop me from going to a city or going back to what I feel is my homeland? Because of the coronavirus. We in the last day. The Lord said this is going to happen in the last days, bro. You feel me? Read it again. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. You hear what the Bible say? Is we not living in those times? Is this not going on right here, right now? You understand what I'm saying? Get Genesis 9 and 6. So, Christ, that's why the Lord said, your salvation nearer than you believe. You, we walking around here every single day not realizing that the day of doom right above our head. What? The day of Christ right above our head. We don't know when he comes. He said he come back like a thief in the night. Now, how many thieves call you and say, hey, bro, I'm going to be over there at 3 a.m. to take the Xbox? Don't no thief say that. He kicking the door late night. You don't know what's going on. You knocked out sleep with your family. He bust in. Why do you think they do those late night no not warrants? Because they, they know you, the, the white man know they're going to be up at 7 o'clock. I don't need to go at that time. They're going to be up by 8.30. But at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., they probably sleep. Right. They're probably just not getting knocked out, getting ready to go to work the next day. That's when I'm going to bust in. Well, Christ said he coming like a thief in the night. Right. Read what you got, huh? Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6. Watch this. Whoso sheddeth man's blood. So all through Atlanta, you got brothers shedding other brothers' blood. Sisters shedding other sisters' blood. That's what the Bible talking about. It said, whoso sheddeth men's blood, read. By men shall his blood be shed. That's black on black crime in the Bible. That's retaliation in the Bible. That's the word I call it karma. God call it judgment. You go around, you want to kill your brothers, you want to kill your sisters, and you don't just kill your brothers and sisters by actually taking a gun and putting it to their head. You kill them by lying on them. You kill them by having hatred for them. Get that in 1 John 3.15. You understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that we got to get our mind accustomed to. And guess what? You might not be keeping every single law before Christ return, but you better start keeping them. You better start doing your best to keep them. You better get your fringes. You better get that beard popping. I see you already got your beard. I don't pray. I ain't seen your. You got your beard? Let that thing grow, bro. Let that beard grow. That's a mad badge of manly dignity. God called us to be gods on earth. That's right. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that the woman is automatically more attracted to the beard or not the beard. If God said, I want man to be made in my image and he allows it to grow out of your face, that means he already put something in her to be attracted to it. It's only the Babylonian woman that wants you to shave your beard like a little boy because Massa wants you to look like a little boy. But a, a real black woman gonna say, nah, baby, grow your beard. Why you cutting it? It look bad. Don't do that. You like a, you like a baby. You like, you like me. You like a woman. No, 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 grow that thing out. That's a badge of manly dignity. You understand? Go ahead. First John chapter 3 and verse 15. This is a message to all the black men in uh, Atlanta. Read. 
Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Read it again from the top. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. The Bible says if you got hatred for your brother, you are already a murderer. Because what that means is, if you could get away with it, you'll kill him. You understand? Because some people have so much hatred for another person, the only thing stopping them is they might go to jail for it, or they haven't found a way to get away with it yet. But if you knew you could get away with it, you got so much hatred for that brother, you'll put him to death. You'll shoot him dead in his head and walk away like ain't nothing going on. Right. That's the spirit that's on our people today. That's why the Lord had to put the law way back in Genesis. Whosoever shed me in blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Right. That's why black on black crime run rampant in our community. That's why retaliation. That's why it's hard to calm somebody down when they cousin that got shot. you like, hey man, don't kill him, bro. Just fall back, brother. Like, now nah, we got to ride on this nigga. We got to ride on him. But guess what? The white man been hanging us, slaughtering us, what? murdering us, what? and yeah. not one time have we even stepped up to him and said, we tired of you teaching us lies. What? We tired of you forcing white Jesus on us. What? We tired of you putting the coronavirus in our neighborhood. Yeah. We gonna stand up and keep the commandments of God. We gonna fight right. spiritually. We, we, won't even, we won't even start keeping the commandments of God to at least fight spiritually because guess what? We can't win in no physical war with this man. He make the guns. He made, You can't take no gun and try to fight him. He make guns. He make what? bullets. All he got to do is say, we ain't selling no more Negroes, bullets, or guns. We'll run out of bullets and they'll kill us all. So God didn't set us up to fight that way. That's God right. said, keep the commandments. That's Love right. your brother. Right. Wear your fringes. Right. Rock your beard. Right. Keep the Sabbath day. Right. Right. You understand that? Go ahead. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Uh -huh. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. He said no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. You can't get the kingdom of God being a murderer. That's right. It, even if the thought of hating your brother, you can't get the kingdom of God. You want to say something? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Shalom, my man. What's your name, brother? Can you be in your quiet or what? What about you, my man? T. T. All right. Watch this. All right. My brother brings repentance. Do you acknowledge repentance, correct? What is repentance though? What is repentance? Because we, I don't want you to leave here and you don't understand what is repentance. What about you, T? Admitting and being accountable of your role and asking for forgiveness. Huh? Admitting, uh, admitting your role and asking for forgiveness. No, that's not repentance. What is repentance? Uh, I was trying to say the same thing, but actually trying to get back in the favor of God. So repentance is? You understand? I say, just like a, you know, see a car going up a one way, you know that's a one way, do not enter. You understand? But maybe the phone distract him and they acknowledge that's a one way. He ain't gonna go that way no more. That's repentance. Like, you see a man chained from loving a woman and want to love a man. Now he acknowledge that, listen, that's not good, that's not right in the book. You understand? You're chained from it. That's repentance. You understand? So now, what I want to ask you guys, you understand? Do you feel like God love everybody upon the face of the earth? Our Christ died for everybody. You believe that? That, that? That's what I want to ask. Because I would write here and we'll ask him. If, God, listen, this good. Why we came here on the slave cargo ship? We have to understand and know why we came here on the slave cargo ship. What we did to take that wrong. You understand? That's a man just coming and just take 12 tribes. This is 12 tribes. God said these people right here is more than the sand of the sea. But the white man can take the sound of the sea and come on this side, what happened? You understand? So you have to understand now, do God love everybody, T? Yeah! Do God love everybody, T? I don't know. I want you to bring that to us, sir. I want you to bring that to yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go to Romans chapter 9, verse 13. So does God love everybody, do you think? He, he created everybody. He created everybody, absolutely. I think so. You would think so, right? All right. Well, let me show you something in the Bible, and then I'm going to show you a few scriptures that would negate that thought. But we have not been properly taught that because of our sin and because we fell into captivity. Now, our oppressors teach us their version of the Bible. Same Bible, but they twist our mind. They haven't taught us correctly. Right? Come on. Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. Bring it out. As it is written. You listen to this, bro? As it is written. Read. Jacob have I loved. So Jacob would be these brothers uh, and sisters here on this sign. On the right side you got, or your left, my right, you have what God calls us, which are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim on down. On the left side, or your right, is what the oppressor called us. African American, West Indian, Haitian, Puerto Rican, so on and so forth, right? Those are the names our oppressor gave us. 
So we make up the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. So when he said, Jacob have I loved, God said he loved who? Jacob or Israel, right? Go ahead. But Esau have I hated. What that mean? There's no way God can love everybody because he said there's a particular nation on earth that he has hatred for. So how could God love everybody? Who taught us that? The same nation that God said he hated. That's right. Read it again. Watch this. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Read. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? So somebody might hear that and say, wait a minute. You mean God got hatred for a nation? That's kind of unrighteous. The Bible said, what should we say then? Is God unrighteous? Read. God forbid. God said, hell no, I ain't unrighteous. <laughs> God said, I'm not unrighteous because I love one race and I have hatred for another. God created the races, correct? So he got, he feel free to do whatever he wants to do with the races, correct? Now watch this. Read. Second Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 54. And after these, Abram, Adam, Adam also, whom thou made his Lord over all creatures. Of, of them came we all. So of Adam come all races, right? Everybody descend from Adam. Adam had sons. Noah ended up coming out of them. Noah had three sons. The rest of the world put to death. And out of Noah's three sons come us, everybody, right? So everybody comes from the lineage of Adam, correct? Read it again. And after these, Adam also, Adam also, whom thou made his Lord over all thy creatures. My chick, my chick, go ahead. Of him come we all. So we all come from Adam. Read, watch this. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. The Bible says, and also the people whom thou hast chosen. So although God made all races, he chose one nation. Who was the race that he chose? The Israelites. Get there real quick in Isaiah 45 and 1, real quick. 44 and 1. We'll come right back here. So the Lord said he made all races to come from Adam. But guess what? He only had one race that he chose. Watch this. Read. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Israel what? Israel, who I have chosen. So God chose the Israelites, like you mentioned. You understand that? The Israelites would be us, the 12 tribes of Israel, so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. Right? Now go back. And after these, Adam also, whom I have made Lord over all thy creatures, of him cometh we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. So who did God choose, bro? The Israelites, right? As we just read in Isaiah 44. Come on. All these have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou made it the world for our sake. You, hear, you realize what God just said? He made the world for our sakes. So that's not just the trees, the land, the, the fruits, the vegetables, the water. He made the people too. God made people for us. But what they supposed to be doing? Serving us. They don't serve us now. We serve them because we broke God's commandments. That's why, that's why it's very heavy for you to repent. So you can have a chance to rule these nations again as it was said from the beginning. Read that part again, verse 55. That's some heavy stuff we read. Read. All these have I spoken before thee, O Lord, Read. because thou madest the world for our sake. So the world, the whole planet Earth, and everything in the Earth, and everything on the Earth was made for the black man, Hispanic man, and Native American man to rule it. That's why. The Bible calls us the Israelites. Read. As for the other people. Now, to get to the question, what about the other race of people? All the other races outside of this nation right here. What about them, God? Watch this, read. Which also come from Adam. They come from Adam too, read. Thou hast said that they are nothing. What the Bible say? That they are nothing. God said they ain't nothing. You understand what we read? We read in the Holy Bible. This is in the King James Version Bible. God said the other races outside of your race are nothing. Now, is that racism? Is that racism? 
Racism is the definition of when you think one race is superior to another. God says our race was who the world was made for. All the other races to God are nothing. Is that racism? Well, according to America's or uh, uh, the Merriam-Webster's dictionary definition of racism, it would be. But to God, it's the way he created every, everything. It's his will. You understand? Read. But be like unto spittle. You know what spittle is? You ever fall asleep and, and you, you feel your face wet? You done drooled a little bit? That spit. That spittle. You just hop a spit right here. That spit. God said they like that. So you mean to tell me the kings that rule the earth today, the presidents and the prime ministers and the viceroys of all these nations, God said they ain't nothing? And the black man in the ghetto today that the world called niggas and coons, they the rightful rulers of the planet earth? Right. It's astonishing when you really think about it. Right. But that's what the Bible is saying. This is why you must repent. That's because as you repent, your understanding opens. Lord's will, you'll rule this planet earth. And Lord's will, we all are ruling this earth. Right. On top of these nations. Right. Right. Read it again. As for... Be like unto spittle. Be like unto spittle. Read and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So how many races, how many nations on the earth today? 18, right? We make up one race. The 12 tribes of Israel, blacks, Hispanic, Native American Indians, the children of the diaspora, children of the slave trade, that's us, scattered throughout the world. That's just one race. You got 17 other races. God said, take them 17 other races, and they like a drop that fall out of a bucket. That's right. If you got a big bucket of water, just because I'm sure you probably didn't come for y'all some country boy like me. We're from the South. You don't care some bucket, you better wash some cars or something like that. And say you strip and fall or you slip and you just drop one thing. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let me get just one little drop. God said that's how all the other races outside of the nation of Israel are. That's They're like right. a drop of a bucket. God said he don't give a damn about them. Right. That's what God saying. He said, I don't give a damn about them. Right. Those aren't my children. Right. You and I are. Right. That's why we must repent, bro. It's a lot at stake. It's a lot at stake. All you got to do is repent and you're going to be in your rightful place. Right. Keep reading. Watch this, though. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathens. These heathen, these other nations, these other races. Read which have ever been reputed as nothing. Reputed as reputation. God said their reputation always been nothing. God said they ain't never been nothing. Right. They've always been spit or a drop of a bucket to me. Read. Have begun to be lords over us. Look at that. Now they rule over us. That's what he said. Andrews, Andrews is trying to fathom how is it that you made us the greatest nation on earth, but yet the basis of all men rule us. The worst of the worst of races rules us now. That's the so-called white man. He's a cave man. He literally crawled out the caves of Georgia, Russia, and now he ruled the whole planet. God said he the worst of the worst of the. He get that in um Ezekiel seven twenty four real quick. God said he the worst of the heathen, the base of all men. Now he rule over me and you. Now we gotta pay him tax. Now we spend money with his face on it. You understand? Read, read what you got. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. 7 and verse 24. Come on. Wherefore, I will bring thee the worst of the heathen. He said, I'm going to bring against us the worst of the heathen. Because it takes a. Can somebody get that sign for me? Hold that sign up for me, please. Thank you, Cap. I want the brothers to see it. Thank, thank you, all Now, look, what, what has to be in your spirit for you? See that picture down there where they was burning us alive and all stood around and took a picture? You got to ask yourself, what would make. What, would, what kind of spirit is in a person? To watch a young man be burned alive after being hung from a hung from a tree, yeah. killed, put him on the ground, burn him, and then I'll take pictures smiling. What kind of spirit is that? Picnics. You understand? Picnics. That's where picnic come from. Pick a nigga. Yeah, right. Pick a nigga. Whichever one you want, we're gonna kill him tonight. Just like they used to do, they used to see us out and about throughout the streets of Georgia, see us out and about, out the streets of Mississippi, Louisiana. They knew that night, oh I know where he live at. He lived over there by Miss Fanny there. Yeah, we're gonna go ride through that nigga house tonight. We're going to take him and lynch him and burn him. Read it again. Therefore, I will bring thee the worst of the heathen. The Bible said the Lord is going to bring against us the worst of the heathen, bro. The worst of the worst. And he is against us right now, ruling over us right now. Why? Because we broke our commandments. So guess what we got to do? What we got to do now, bro? We got to get it right. We got to come back to God's commandments. This thing, hey, let me ask you this real quick. Let me ask you this real quick. I, 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 I got to talk to you right here. Come talk. Whatever you got. You got a question? Come on. 
Let me eat. Right, right, right. So you said, how long this punishment gonna happen, right? So watch this. Give me the book of Ze uh, Zephaniah 13 and 8 real quick. I understand something. Our whole race ain't gonna make it, bro. We love our people. We love our mama, our grandmama, aunties. We love them. So a lot of them, you gonna bring this message to them to show them that we the chosen people of God, that he don't love all races, that we must keep the commandments to get the kingdom of heaven, and they gonna say what? Not my Jesus. I'm in Islam. I don't believe that Bible stuff. I'm a five percenter. I'm a seven day Adventist. They not gonna wanna hear it. But God is gonna mark them once you tell them, once you reveal this news to them, and they gonna be marked. The best thing for you and I to do is to keep the commandments to get ourselves to the kingdom of God. And on the meantime, try to build our people up at the same time. Right, come on. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse eight. Watch this, bro. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. It said all of the land. That's talking about America, right? It said two-thirds are going to be cut off and die. Two-thirds is 66.7%. So 66.7% of our people are going to die in America because they're not going to change. They're going to continue to smoke their dope. They're going to continue to break God's Sabbath. They're going to continue to be fornicators, idolaters, adulterers. They're not going to change. But God calling you to change. You to be the leader. You to step up to be your household leader. Rule your wife and teach her the commandments of God along with your children to build you and your household up. You understand? All our people are not going to do it. So in this day of judgment, the Lord, when he sends those bombs, I wanted to get into that a little bit earlier. When the Lord sends the destruction to this land, a lot of our people are going to die, unfortunately. But that's the word of God. We got to get ourselves together so we fall into that one third, which is that 33.3%. You understand? Keep reading. But the third shall be left therein. But the third part, that's one third of our people going to be left therein. Read. Yes, sir. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will re refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on the name of the Lord. So the Bible said, but that one third going to repent and start to keep the commandments. All our people are not going to get it, but God wants you to get it. So you can stand on this side. I know you see about 20 of us. Get Matthew 26 and 6. I know you see about 20, 30 of us out here right now, but it's way more of us. And we're waking up more and more every day. Right. Every day, these athletes are coming out saying, these entertainers are coming out and saying, right. the Lord waking our people up. Right. These videos being shared all over the world, getting millions of views. Right. It would behoove you to come on the winning side, bro. Because this is the winning team. As long as we keep the commandments and the faith in Christ, we're going to be destined for what's destined for us, which is the kingdom of God. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.